I'm Tom and this is my eighth and last video for the assembly of the PrinterBot Simple Metal Kit. In this video we're going to install the necessary software for the printer and calibrate the Z-Probe. But before we start installing the software, we're going to prepare the surface of the print bed for its first print job. The tried and true solution as a bed topping is blue painters tape, for example from 3M or from Tesa, which is what I'm using here. You'll want to cover the entire surface of the print bed with the blue tape and lightly press it down. Before that, make sure that the bed surface is clean and doesn't have any oil or grease on it and for that you can use some window cleaner or alcohol to rub it down. When you've covered the entire surface with painter's tape, you can rub it down with, for example, your fingernail, but make sure you don't get your nail caught somewhere. After that, I like to cut off the excess tape. Just keep in mind that if you cut it off like this, you're probably going to scratch that edge of the bed. You can also just fold down the tape onto the bottom of the bed. If you're still seeing bubbles under the tape at this point, you can always peel back and reapply the tape. Next up, we'll connect the printer to a computer with the included micro USB cable and power up the printer through the included power supply. Windows users will still have to install a driver at this point, which is linked in the description below. The driver is universally usable for Windows 7 and 8. Now, with this next step, I'm going to deviate from the official printabot instructions a bit. Printabot recommends using Repetier Host as a all-in-one host and slicer solution. I'm going to show you how to set up Cura from Ultimaker because I think it's a bit more user-friendly and easier to use. But if you want to use Repetier Host instead, you can do that as well. Cura is available for download for Windows, Mac OS and Ubuntu. Now, the cool thing about Cura is that it doesn't just work for the Ultimakers, but it also works for many other printers. And for example, for the printer bots, there are even predefined profiles that you can pick in the first run wizard after you've installed Cura. Since this guide is for the printer bot Simple Metal, that's the model that you should pick. And that's all the input Cura needs. Now, the first two things you want to do when you open up Cura is you want to switch to the full settings under the expert menu and you'll want to go to File Preferences and switch the printer window type to Pronterface UI. This will make manually controlling the printer in these next steps a bit easier. Before we move on, I want to explain how the three movement axes of the printer work. When you're looking at the printer from the front, the front left corner of the bed is the zero point for all three axes X, Y and Z. As the nozzle moves to the right on the bed, it increases its position on the X axis. As it moves further back on the bed, it increases its position on the y-axis. And as it moves up, it increases its position on the z-axis. Now, these three axes are always relative from the bed to the nozzle. So, as the nozzle moves in the positive x-direction, the bed is actually going to start moving to the left. At this point, we can use Cura to connect to the printer for the very first time. For this, we're going to use the button Print with USB. You might need to select the correct serial port before it starts connecting. Now on this interface you have a couple controls. First of all, you can move the X and Y axis in increments of 0.1, 1, 10 or 100 millimeters. And after homing them through the X home and Y home buttons, you can start moving them around to get a feel for how the printer moves. Because the Z axis is not yet calibrated and adjusted, and we're going to do that in the next step, you shouldn't try homing or moving the z-axis all the way down yet. Also, the white home button in the lower left corner will also home z, so it's probably best to not press that yet. So, when you're homing x, the print bed will move all the way to the right. When you're homing y, the print head will move all the way to the back. So, because the sensor for the z-axis is not yet adjusted, it would crash pretty hard into the print bed if you just kept it going. So. Instead, we can stop it at any time by pressing a large metal object onto the sensor and triggering it that way. Alternatively, you can just yank out the power cable. So, to make our work easier for the next step, we're going to let the Z-axis home 
and then stop at about a centimeter or half an inch above the bed surface or however close you're comfortable. Either way, you use a pair of pliers or any other large metal object to trigger the sensor at that point. So next up we're going to roughly adjust the sensor for the z-axis. For this you want to move the print head to about the center of the print bed. For this you can either use the controls in Cura or you can push the axis into position by hand after the motors have turned themselves off. Just keep in mind that you should always keep the power supply connected when you're pushing the axis around rapidly. For the next step you can either wait on the motors to turn themselves off or you can simply unplug the power cable. You'll then want to move the z-axis almost all the way down by turning the z-screw by hand. For the next steps we're going to need a regular piece of paper and we're going to use it as a feeler gauge. So keep moving the z-axis down until you can just feel it touching the piece of paper. Not until it grabs onto the paper really tightly but just until you can feel it rubbing against the nozzle. Then loosen the two nuts on the z-sensor and move it down until it's about a millimeter above the surface of the heated bed. Uh, for those of you who aren't yet familiar with the metric system, and you really should get familiar with it because everything in 3D printing is metric, that's about 40 thou. You can then tighten down the Z-sensor either with needle nose pliers or with the included wooden wrenches if those fit over the nuts. Mine didn't, so that's why I'm using the pliers here. Either way, when you turn on the printer or if you had it turned on the whole time, the LED on top of the Z-sensor should now light up. If it doesn't, you'll need to lower it a bit further. If you disconnected the power supply in the last step, you'll now need to reconnect to your printer in Cura. And you can do that through the connect button. You can now home the Z-axis for the first time. And naturally, it will stop a good bit above the surface of the print bed. And that's okay. The ideal height here is, just like before, the point where you can just about feel the tip of the nozzle touching the piece of paper. Now, to compensate for that, we can use the M212 command, which we can enter into the command line interface on the right side of the printer interface. M212 Z minus 0.2 will set the home point 0.2 millimeters below the point where the sensor triggered. So to test the new home point, you should home the z-axis and then move it down until it stops. You can always use the M114 command to check the current position of the printer's nozzle. And you'll see that it says Z0.00 here, which means that the printer now thinks that the nozzle is just about touching the surface of the print bed. You can then get the nozzle incrementally closer to its correct position by using the M212 command with increasing offsets. And after setting each offset, zeroing the axis and moving it all the way down, you should use the piece of paper and check whether or not the nozzle is touching it yet. Once you've found the ideal position, you can use the M500 command to permanently store that offset you've just set. And you can check that that was properly stored by using the M501 command. And right here it's reporting that we've set an offset of minus one millimeter. Now there's one last thing to do before you can start a print. And for that you want to head over to the start ng code tab, open up the start g code and insert a g29 command after the g28z0 line. This will tell the printer to do a measuring loop before each print. So after it homes the X and Y axis, it will home the Z axis and then move to an additional two spots to check whether or not the bed is trimmed and then compensate for that in real time by moving the Z axis up and down. Basically, it means you don't have to adjust your print bed ever. During your first print, you can watch the Z axis move up and down in tiny bits to compensate for little offsets in the bed's trimming. Next up, we'll insert some filament into the exuder. Before we do that, you should check that this little nut right here is almost at the very top of its slot in the aluminum base. 
This sets the tension on the idler arm of the extruder and makes sure that the drive gear is gripping the filament properly. So you want to push down on the extruder arm and use your thumb to support the wire arm and then insert the filament as far as possible into the extruder and hot end. Since this is our first print with this hot end, you don't need to heat it up to insert filament, but when you remove it or insert fresh filament after that, you will need to heat it up. Now, as long as a model is loaded in Cura, you can simply click the print with USB button. And after Cura connects to the printer, you can simply click the print button to start the print job. Now, before the printer starts with the actual printing, it will wait on the hot end to reach the proper printing temperature. And at this point, the hot end will be hot enough to burn you, so don't try and touch it. The printer will then home all three axes, do the bed auto tramming, extrude a bit of filament, and then start the actual print job. And at this point, you'll see how well you've set the C sensor in the steps before. If the nozzle is now dragging through the blue painter's tape, it is set a bit too low. If the individual lines the nozzle lays down aren't touching each other and the print detaches itself from the build plate, it's probably set too high. In my case, it's set a tiny bit too low. So that concludes the assembly and initial setup of the PrintAbot Simple Metal Kit. There are a couple things that you should still do and preferably in this order. You should measure the filament and set the correct diameter in your slicer. By looking at how the first layer of your prints turn out, you should fine tune the height of your z-axis by using the M212 command again. You should print a fan shroud for the extruder fan. You should reduce jerk and acceleration in your firmware and you should tune the current to your stepper drivers. So if you like my assembly guide, I'd appreciate a like and a comment on this video. If you want to stay up to date as I release new videos around 3D printing, be it reviews or guides or anything else, feel free to click that subscribe button down here.